soil part 3 in this module we will learn about soil pollution various methods to control soil pollution and soil conservation underground soil is likely to be polluted by chemicals released by industrial waste as well as decomposed and partially decomposed sanitary wastes many dangerous chemicals like cadmium chromium lead arsenic selenium products are likely to be deposited in underground soil these chemicals can damage the normal activities and ecological balance of the underground soil. As land is static, land pollution stays exactly unless someone cleans it up. We also know that plastics take hundreds of years to disappear, while radiation can contaminate ten times longer. The simplest effect of land pollution is that it takes land out of circulation. That is, the more land we use up, the less we have remaining. That might not be a problem in rural areas where there is plenty of land, but it is certainly a concern where productive agricultural land is concerned. The biggest problem comes when contaminated land is returned to use, either as a building or agricultural land. Houses might be built on sites which have not been cleaned, putting the people at risk. People might get their water from rivers supplied by groundwater, contaminated by landfill or mine workings, or some polluted land some distance away. As a result, illness develop over decades. Thus, the effects of soil pollution are vast and they can be summarized into three broad categories. The effects of soil pollution on agricultural land, industrial land and urban land are as follows. Soil that has been contaminated should no longer be used to grow food because the chemicals can leach in the food and harm people who eat it. The crop yield in contaminated soil is less, which in turn can cause more harm because lack of plants on the soil will cause more erosion. In addition, the pollutants can change the structure of soil and the types of microorganisms that live in it which in turn may alter the type of larger predator in that region. Thus, soil pollution can change the whole ecosystem. The three R's, namely reduce, reuse and recycle can help to control soil pollution. Reducing the use of chemical fertilizer and pesticide by applying biofertilizers and manures is an important step to control soil pollution. Reusing of materials such as plastic bags, glass containers, paper etc. can reduce solid waste pollution. Recycling materials such as paper, some kinds of plastics and glass helps in conservation of natural resources. Control of land loss and soil erosion can also be checked by reforestation, crop rotation or mixed cropping can improve fertility of land.
The accumulated solid waste on soil can pose a great problem. Hence, proper methods should be adopted for management of solid waste disposal. This involves collection, transfer and transport of wastes to suitable sites for disposal by methods which are environmentally compatible. Industrial waste can be treated physically, chemically and biologically until they are less hazardous. Acidic and alkaline waste should be first neutralized. The insoluble material, if biodegradable, should be allowed to degrade under controlled conditions before being disposed. New areas for storage of hazardous waste should be investigated such as deep well injections and more secure landfills. The most widely used technique of solid waste management is burying the waste in locations situated away from residential area. Environmental and aesthetic conditions must be taken into account before selecting the dumping sites. Incineration of other wastes is expensive and leaves a huge residue and adds to air pollution. Pyrolysis is a process of combustion in absence of oxygen or the process of burning material under controlled oxygen. This is an alternative to incineration and the gas and liquid thus obtained can be used as fuel. Pyrolysis of carbonaceous wastes like firewood, coconut, palm waste, corn combs, cashew shell, rice husk, paddy straw and sawdust yields charcoal along with products like tar, methyl, alcohol, acetic acid, acetone and a fuel gas which may reduce soil pollution. Anaerobic or aerobic decomposition of biodegradable municipal and domestic waste gives organic manure. Cow dung which releases methane into the atmosphere should be processed further in gober gas plants to produce gober gas and good manure. Bioremediation means to use a biological remedy to abate or clean up contamination. Microbes are often used to treat environmental problems found in soil, water and sediments. Plants have also been used in bioremediation processes and this is called phytoremediation. Biological processes have been used for some inorganic materials like metals to lower radioactivity and remediate inorganic contaminants. Metal contamination usually accumulates in the harvestable plant parts which is then disposed of in a waste landfill before or after incineration to reduce the plant to ash except for mercury and selenium which can be released as volatile elements directly from the plants to the atmosphere. Land pollution massively occurs during earthquakes, landslides, hurricanes and floods. Cleaning of land in such situations becomes difficult and expensive. Also, it may take years to restore the affected area. These kinds of natural disasters cause pollution as well as leave many victims homeless. There are several ways of soil conservation. Planting trees. Roots of trees firmly hold the soil. As the roots grow deeper into the soil, they prevent soil erosion. Building terraces. A terrace is a leveled section of a cultivated area on a hill which due to its structure prevents rapid surface runoff water. 
It gives the land mass a stepped appearance, thus slowing the easy washing down of soil. Dry stone walking is a method used to create terraces in which stone structures are created without using mortar or binding. No till farming. When soil is prepared for plowing, the process is known as tiling. This is a way of growing crops without disturbing it through tillage. The process of tiling is beneficial in mixing fertilizers in the soil, shaping it into rows and preparing a surface for sowing. But this can cause compaction of soil, loss of organic matter and death of organisms. Contour Plowing This practice of farming across the slopes takes into account the slope gradient and elevation of slope across the contour slopes. This method helps in slowing the water runoff and prevents soil from being washed away. Crop Rotation Continuous cultivation of same crop leads to imbalance in the fertility of the soil which can be avoided by growing dissimilar crops in an area sequentially. Soil pH is one of the determinants of availability of nutrients in soil and uptake of nutrients in plants. Thus maintaining suitable value of pH is essential for soil conservation. Watering the soil is a way to prevent soil erosion by wind. Salinity management. This is caused by excessive accumulation of salts and has a negative effect on the metabolism of the crops. Salinity is detrimental to the vegetative life and hence it must be controlled. Soil organisms. Organisms like earthworms through aeration enhance the availability of macronutrients in soil and thereby promote its fertility. Indigenous crops. Planting native crops is beneficial for soil conservation. But if non-native crops are grown, the field should be bordered by indigenous crops for soil conservation.